Greetings Internet, Sean Shooping here. In today's experiment, I'm going to be attempting to build my own highly available custom load balancer using HA Cluster, HA Proxy and three CentOS VMs. So this is actually part two in my series of over-engineering your home lab. In part one, I spoke about how I wanted to use my home lab to learn how to build highly available fault tolerant applications and services. But then I also came to the realization that my core infrastructure in the lab should be highly available too. I use Ubuntu, Juju and Metal as a service pretty extensively just to speed up the building of stuff in the lab. But I've always run single instances of all of those things. So if any of them break, I'm kind of stuck until I actually go back and fix whatever's broken. So this time around, I'm going to be building two of everything, which seems logical enough, but I don't want to have to go manually fail over into the standby component of whatever's broken. Everything in the lab should just continue working as normal until I actually find the time to go fix said broken thing. So that said, I'm going to be building two metal as a service region controllers. Uh, but what I'm going to need to do is that I'm going to need to put a load balancer in front of it to abstract its entry point. Because if one of them fail, I don't want to have to go manually update the URL in my browser. I also don't need to go update the configuration of my automation pieces on things like the Juju controller. So I've already installed and configured a single MAS server on one of my Dell 3020M micro PCs. I've configured the DNS name in my lab. I've downloaded Ubuntu and CentOS images, and I've also configured and labeled networks and spaces. Then I've gone ahead and enlisted all the hardware and deployed Ubuntu 18.04 to five of the 12 machines that I have available. These five machines are going to be the core infrastructure of the lab, and I've also registered them as KVM hosts, which enables me to run virtual machines on top of the bare metal. Now, in a previous experiment, I spoke about how you can use MAS as a simple no frills virtualization solution. So if you want to know more about how that works, I'm going to link a card in this video to that experiment. To build a load balancer, I'm going to deploy three virtual machines, each on a different physical host. To do this, I'll go to the KVM tab in MAS, choose a host, select take an action and compose a new machine. For the first machine, I'll name it load balancer zero, assign a single core, one gig of memory and 25 gigs of storage and then click compose. I'll then just repeat this process for load balancer one and two. Just like the physical machines, these new virtual machines will boot from the network and eventually end up as new. Uh, I'll then deploy an operating system to them and I'm gonna be using CentOS because I'll cluster the three using Pacemaker and I'm already familiar with how to do that in a CentOS context. I'm also going to install HA proxy to do the load balancing to our backend MAS services. I'm going to be using Ansible to install and configure the Pacemaker and HA proxy pieces on all three machines at once. So I've gone ahead and prepared an inventory file with the host names of all our load balancer machines. Uh, to check that our machines are available and accessible, uh, we can use the Ansible ping module and here we can see that all the machines are pingable and accessible over SSH. Over here is my Ansible playbook. At the top, I've declared all my variables, which I'll reference later down in the code. Uh, I've encrypted the HA cluster password because this is probably going to end up in a source control repository like GitHub or GitLab, and it's bad practice to store passwords in clear text in code. I've left an example in line of how to encrypt a password. So if you want to plagiarize the code, check the links in the description uh, for a link to my GitHub. So if we check out the tasks, in the first task, I'm using yum to install three packages, Corosync, Pacemaker, and PCS, and uh, we'll set their state to present, when Ansible distribution equals CentOS. Uh, next, we'll ensure that the services are enabled, but not started. And then we can use Ansible service module again to start up the PCSD service only. Uh, after that, I'm going to use the user module to configure the HA cluster username and password. Now, this was a little bit of a new learn for me. I didn't know how to do this until a little while ago, but I've left another inline comment on how to hash the password when manipulating user passwords with Ansible. After this, we're going to authenticate the cluster nodes to each other using PCS cluster auth. 
uh, dash u and the ha cluster username and the ha cluster password which i showed earlier which is that encrypted value uh, and we're going to run that against all three of our nodes in our 2b cluster now the interesting part is that i've got a win condition here and the when condition says uh, inventory underscore hostname in groups bootstrap. Now, if we go look at the inventory file, essentially what this will do is that this task is only going to run on the first node in the cluster because I've, I've tagged that in the inventory file as the bootstrap node. After that, we can initialize the cluster. Uh, we're gonna simply run PCS cluster setup dash dash name using the cluster name variable uh, dash user HA cluster username again, HA cluster password, obviously against all three of our uh, nodes in the cluster. And then after that, we're gonna do a start cluster services uh, with the Ansible command. And I'm just, it's two commands that I'm gonna rattle off one after the other. And I'm only gonna run that on the first node as well. After that, I'm just gonna write, I'm gonna get the cluster status. So we'll simply run a PCS status cluster and I'm gonna register the output. And then after that, I'm just gonna use a debug to print the output so that after the playbook runs, we can see in clear text that, okay, cool. The, the pacemaker cluster is up and running. Lastly, I'm gonna disable the fencing mechanism because I'm not gonna have any corruptible resources in the cluster. Fencing ensures that a cluster member won't try online resources that are already online because it loses visibility of the status of the cluster. When this happens, healthy cluster peers put up a fence between healthy resources and six zombie machines. Or put simply, they shoot the other node in the head. Okay, and then lastly, we're going to use uh, the Ansible command just to configure a single resource in the cluster, which is simply a floating IP that will move around between each node dependent on their cluster status. Now, the last thing that's left to do is simply run the playbook. So we can simply run an Ansible dash playbook dash u connect as the user center OS dash b for become so that the task runs as root. Uh, run that against our inventory file called lb-inventory.ini and the name of the playbook, which is hacluster.yaml and then dash dash ask dash vault pass uh, so that I can interactively type in the password to decrypt all the secrets up at the top of the playbook. That's not supposed to happen. Uh, I know what happened. Um, can go back into the code, can copy this, paste, set enable to no, delete that. Service name, firewall D. Forgot to disable the local firewall on all the boxes. That's why the cluster didn't initialize. <laughs> okay, so let's try that again. Yay, success. All right, so if we scroll up and check the debug output I declared in the playbook, we can see that we have three nodes in our cluster and all of them are online. And the only resource I created was the floating IP, so we should be able to ping that now. And to check which host it's alive on, we can SSH into the floating IP. And here we can see that we're on load balancer zero. Uh, to do a quick failover test, we can simply reboot the server that the floating IP is alive on. And what we'll see is that IP should flip over to a surviving member in the cluster. So if I try SSH to the VIP again, I get this warning because the host identity behind the IP has changed. So after we clean that up from our known hosts file, we can see that we definitely end up on a different load balancer host. Cool. So now that the clustering pieces are working, we can get to installing the HA proxy bits. So as with the cluster pieces, I'm gonna be using Ansible to install the rest of the HA proxy config on all the nodes at once. So here's a playbook I adapted from a tutorial I found online. In the first task, we'll use the yum module to upgrade all packages to latest when Ansible distribution equals CentOS. Uh, next, we'll use Ansible's community.general.se port to relax SE Linux to allow applications on the box to make outgoing connections on a specific port. We need to do this, otherwise HAProxy's backend connection will get denied when proxying the front side client request. 
Uh, after that, we'll use the yum module to install HAProxy itself. Next, we'll use the stat module to check if the original haproxy.conf file has been backed up and we'll register the output. I'll use the result of the register to back up haproxy.conf if it hasn't been backed up already. We'll then overwrite haproxy.conf for the template I have in the same directory as this playbook. The local haproxy.conf has all the monitoring config for stats and information about haproxy itself. The front-end config for the front side of the load balancer will be listening on port 80. And in the back-end config is information about the MAS servers HAProxy will be connecting to. So here we can see that we'll just round-robin the connections to each back-end. Uh, we'll perform a basic check at a specific URI to ensure the back-end app is up and healthy. For now, I'm just gonna declare one server and then later on when we add a second machine, we can go uncomment line 71 and rerun the playbook to add the second MAS server. So HAProxy will reach out to each MAS backend on port 5240 at URI slash MAS slash R and it will look for an HTTP response code of 200 OK. So if we switch back to the remaining tasks in the playbook, we'll use Ansible's line in file to configure our syslog for the HAProxy stats to work. We'll use the file module to ensure that etc syslog.d slash haproxy.conf exists and use line in file again to ensure that our syslog is configured correctly in order to create all the necessary access logs. Finally, we'll use Ansible service module to ensure that haproxy and our syslog are enabled at boot and ensure that they've both been started slash restarted. Uh, to execute the task, we can simply run ansible-playbook, login as CentOS, make sure it runs as root, and uh, declare the playbook. Quick test to check if it's all working. We can go to the HA proxy stats URL to see if everything's healthy. And now we should be able to hit any of the three load balancer machines on port 80 to display the MAS GUI. So at the beginning of the video, I said I didn't want to change the URL in my browser if something failed. I can now create a DNS record simply named MAS, which will resolve to the floating IP of the load balancer cluster. If I do an NS lookup of the record, we can see that it resolves to the floating IP. And if I throw that up in the browser, we end up at the MAS GUI. So now moving forward, no matter where the services are actually alive, neither me or my automation ever need to change the URL. So that turned out to be more of an Ansible inspired configuration deep dive than it was just configuring a load balancer. So if you're still watching, thanks for sticking around. Um, in the next part, I'm going to probably stand up a high availability Juju controller. Uh, I'm going to use that to stand up a Postgres replica, which I'll use as an external MAS database. And then I'll add an additional MAS server to turn my current single configuration of MAS into a high availability configuration set. Uh, after that, I'll probably do some destructive testing, like randomly turning things on and off and seeing how fault tolerant and highly available everything actually is. Uh, but as for this experiment, that's pretty much all I have for you. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.